heard this out and all the issues that they're dealing with in the state of Texas. And as you, as always, we keep the people who are affected, who have been affected by the pandemic, the virus, those who have gotten it and recovered, the families of those who have lost their lives, we certainly keep them in our prayers. And keep, keep in your prayers that the numbers that we continue to see on the decline, that that continues, because once those go, go down and keep going down and the infection rate is, is not as much as it has been, the sooner we'll be able to be back in in-person worship. So we'll keep those in our prayers. And one joy as we uh, we gather today, we remember our friend and my colleague, Rick Purcell, whose birthday is today. So happy birthday, Rick. He said back there at the console, running things from there. So. As we continue our worship, let's get to our call to worship. We come up so God might open our eyes. One, one second. There we go. We come so God might open our eyes that we may discover the wonders surrounding us, that we may embrace the joy deep within us. We gather so Christ might widen our hearts, that we may hear the sounds of brokenness around us, that we may sing the melodies of hope. We are here so the Spirit might teach us the ways of humility, that we may walk that street named Enduring Love that we may wait at the corner called faithfulness. Our opening hymn this morning is God of the Sparrow. Let us pray. Gracious God, our way in the wilderness, guide us by your word through these 40 days. 
and minister to us with your Holy Spirit so that we may be reformed, restored, and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture this morning to be read, it comes from the Gospel of John, reading from the sixth chapter, verses 35 through 40. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me and still don't believe. Everyone whom the Father gives to me will come to me, and I won't send away anyone who comes to me. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I won't lose anything he has given me but I will raise it up at the last day. This is my Father's will, that all who see the Son and believe in him will have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Friends, this is Holy Scripture for God's people. Thanks be to God. Join me, if you would, in our responsive offering of prayers this morning. How you love us, God of rainbow promises, like a mother who teaches her son the steps for his first dance, like the father who goes out with his daughter after work so that she can learn how to drive, you love us that much and more. How you offer yourself to us, brother of the beloved. You gather us up in your arms simply to hear our deepest hopes. You reach out your scarred hands to gently wipe away our fears. You stain a cross with your blood so we might wa be washed clean in the tears pouring down God's face. How you share yourself with us, journey spirit. You bathe our wearied souls in the cooling waters of baptism. You wipe the dust of the wilderness out of our eyes so we can see the kingdom. You teach us those ancient ways which offer new life for each of us. God and community, holy in one, be with us in this Lenten season, even as we pray. God takes our broken promises and turns them into vows of faithfulness. God takes our biggest failings and shapes lives of service. God listens to our prayers of confession and changes them into songs of mercy. We admit we are hesitant to walk to Jerusalem and beyond with you, God of glory. In a world where we worry about tomorrow before enjoying today, we race by your moments of silence, of learning, in that flood of worries which can overwhelm us. We may miss that assurance that you have not cut us off from your grace. In the deserts of our desires, we may ignore that feast of hope, of joy, of life you offer to us. Forgive us and have mercy on us. In humility, may we offer our lives to others in love, may we share your grace with everyone we meet. In hope, may we wait for you all of our days as you come to us in the life and joy of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Remember your baptism and be grateful. In this place, we find God's word, God's way, God's love, God's forgiveness. What more do we need to sustain us so as we continue as pilgrims along the way? In every wilderness, on every road, in every moment, in every life, in every journey, in every heart, we receive the daily bread we need. God's hope, God's mercy, God's joy. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. <laughs>
this time we offer thanks for all the gifts that continue to come into the church. We know that they come in by mail, they come in in person as you drop them by, and they come in through our online giving platform. For all these gifts, we are grateful, and in that great gratefulness, let us sing our doxology. <laughs> God of grace, you have gifted us with life in Christ. Today we bring the gifts of our work and the gifts of our hearts. May all that we bring and all that we are be your means of grace in the world, that all people may encounter your good news. Amen. Living in the South in the winter can be interesting and challenging at times. It can be 70 degrees one day and 20 degrees the next day or so. Past couple of weeks have not been the best with lots of rain and sleet and freezing rain in many areas. There were lots of places in our area where power was lost. We certainly keep in our prayers those in Texas and other areas who are dealing with weather that they really aren't used to having to deal with and the resulting loss of power and water as well. Of course, in the South, we do have the reputation of panic buying when there's the uh, least little hint of winter weather in the forecast. Just, just mention the word snow or sleet and the bread and milk shelves and the grocery stores empty out. Maybe all at once there was a common desire for French toast, or maybe people just panic thinking they're they're going to be snowed in for days at a time. It is important to be, to be prepared in the event of an emergency. The staples of bread and milk are certainly items that we would want to have ample supplies of. Unless you're on a low carb diet, bread is something that we always need to have on hand. We all have our favorite types of bread. There are two people that live in our house, and yet we have two types of bread on hand. Don't judge me. I probably eat way too much bread, but I like my sandwiches. I like my subs. I like the pita from Harrison's. Good bread can be somewhat of a, a comfort food and something that we often take for granted. Bread is a large part of our church life as well, especially as we think about the sacrament of the Lord's Supper which we will celebrate this morning. When I was serving as pastor at Faith Presbyterian in Greensboro, there was a young lady in our congregation who was raised by a Christian mother and a Jewish father. She embraced her heritage, but chose to live out her faith in the Christian church. But every time we had communion, Elana would, would come to the church early in the morning to break to bake the traditional Jewish bread, the challah, for our communion service. It was wonderful to walk into the church on those Sundays and have the aroma of baked bread baking wafting through the halls. Incidentally, Ilana eventually entered a call to ministry and is serving with her husband at a Presbyterian church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. As we gather on this first Sunday of Lent in all our separate places, I'm sure we all have something different that will serve as bread for our communion service. We have to remember that the elements for communion are symbolic, not the actual body and blood of Christ. Some of the most memorable and meaningful communion services that I have been a part of were ones where the elements consisted of what was available. I remember when I worked at Camp Greer during the summers of my college years, we would, we would end the summer with a communion service for the staff. 
the elements would usually be biscuits that the cook would prepare and the so-called bug juice that we would serve the campers. It was meaningful because those elements had been such a big part of our camp experience for the whole summer. If we remember the Last Supper, Jesus did the same thing. He used elements that were familiar and were at hand. They were observing the Passover meal and Jesus took the bread and, and then the wine and consecrated them as symbolic of his body and blood. So whatever you have available for communion this morning is fine. Maybe it's, maybe it's a Pop-Tart or a bagel. Maybe it's an English muffin or toast. Maybe it's coffee or orange juice. Maybe Diet Coke or iced tea. What, what you eat and drink doesn't matter. Why you eat and drink is what we need to concentrate on. During this Lenten season, we're going to be looking at some of the I am statements from Jesus in the Gospel of John. I was struck by, by this quote that was circulating on social media that says, I am two of the most powerful words for what you put after them shapes your reality. I think it is not insignificant that, and not an accident that Jesus uses these words several times to state an absolute of, of who he is. We begin our series this morning with a statement that I am the bread of life. Earlier in the sixth chapter of John's gospel, we read the familiar story of the feeding of the 5,000. It's interesting to note one difference between John's version and other versions we have in the Gospels. Other versions of the story have Jesus giving the disciples the loaves and fishes to distribute to the throngs. But here in John's Gospel, Jesus is actually the one who feeds the crowd himself. I think perhaps it is important to not over-spiritualize what John is saying in his Gospel. We could gloss over the, the feeding of the 5,000 as a metaphor about, about God being, about us being fed spiritually. And that would make us feel good and we, and we could move on. But John emphasizes over and over again the fact that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. He fed people because they were hungry. The point being that God will provide. This idea of God's provision goes all the way back to the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and, and they're wandering through the desert. They were hungry and they were complaining and God provided for them in the gift of manna from heaven. I want to go back a few verses and read what leads up to our passage for this morning because it touches on the feeding of the 5,000 as well as Old Testament references. Reading from verse 26. Jesus replied, I assure you that you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for the food that doesn't last, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the human one will give you. God the Father has confirmed him as his agent to give life. They ask, what must we do to in order to accomplish what God requires? Jesus replied, this is what God requires, that you believe in him whom God sent. They ask, well, what miraculous sign will you do that we can see and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, just as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus told them, I assure you, it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven to you. But my father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said, sir, give us this bread all the time. And this is when Jesus replies, I am the bread of life. God not only provides for our physical needs, but for our spiritual needs as well. We cry out for help in times of trouble, and God answers our prayer with manna for our lives, with the bread of life. This theme of God's provision is one of, great, one of the great themes of the Bible, and one that we always need to be aware of. 
It is the theme that has sustained God's people throughout the history of the world. The Israelites escaping slavery in Egypt were given all they needed to survive. And the people of God made it to the promised land. I was struck with this idea of God's provision as I was watching the PBS special documentary this week on, on the history of the black church. If you haven't watched this, I highly recommend it. It is fascinating and something I think we all need to, to see. One point of history that was brought out was how even in the midst of the horrors of slavery, even when slaves were not permitted to gather in groups, even when slaves were not permitted to learn to read or write, the seeds of Christianity were planted and they grew. No matter what evils the slave owners would bring down on the slaves, their faith in a God of provision held strong and brought them through some horrific times of hardship and mistreatment. Can you imagine what they thought when they heard the words of Jesus, I am the bread of life. It would be very easy to be cynical and, and not believe that God will indeed provide. But they believed. And they kept on praying. And they sang their spirituals. And the black church was born. I am the bread of life. We can relate this idea of God's provision to our current situation today as we continue to make our way through a pandemic. We continue to see stories on the news almost every night about long lines of people wanting to get food. People who have lost jobs because their workplace was closed down due to the virus wake up each day and, and wonder where the next meal is coming from. Unemployment insurance is running out. And the job market is still tight. The rent is due and the electric bill needs to be paid and the water is about to get cut off and the refrigerator is empty. Because of the generosity of so many people, God is providing for these people. Jesus fed 5,000 all by himself. Armies of volunteers are feeding thousands upon thousands of people because they have heard Jesus say, I am the bread of life. In our Monday night virtual Bible study that sadly is coming to an end tomorrow evening, our leader Don Griggs shared something with us a couple of weeks ago that I had really not considered. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper and we hear the words of an institution, the preacher will most likely say something to the effect of, he took the bread and, and said, this is my body broken for you. Well, that's not exactly what he said. The text actually says, he broke the bread and gave it to them. He gave it to them whole, all of him for all of us. As we gather now around our own tables in our own homes, we gather knowing that the bread of life is offered to us in the sacrifice of our Lord. I am the bread of life. Let us come to the table. Our hymn of preparation is, Ah, Holy Jesus.
This is the table. Not of the church, but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come not because it is I who invite you, it is our Lord, it is will that those who want him should meet him here. May the God of Lynn be with you and also with you. People of God, open your hearts. We open them to the one who calls us beloved. Beloved of God, give thanks and praise to the one who loves you forever. As we sing our hymns of joy to the one who leads us into the kingdom. Hearts overflow with you, covenant keeper, as we lift our hearts to you. When there was no time as we know it, you crafted day and night so we could wait for you in every moment, tasting the savory goodness of grace. You imagine those moments of gathering us to your side to teach us all the wonder of your ways. But we turned our ears towards the whispered invitations of the evil one, running off to play in the wildernesses with rebellion and death on our guides. You recall the promises you had made to Noah, to Sarah, to Joseph, and to Hannah, and so sent the prophets to remind us of the good gift of your covenant and to point out the ways to your heart. When we continue to ignore their words, you send Jesus to be with us, to set us free from the imprisonment we had created for ourselves. So we lift our voices with those who wait, waited patiently and with those who trust your covenant of promises, joining the chorus, choirs of heaven and earth who forever sing of your hope and love. Holy, holy, holy are you, everlasting God, God of our grace. Every living creature in heaven and earth sing your praises, Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who sits at, at your right hand of mercy. Hosanna in the highest. Faithful and holy are you, creator of all, and blessed is Jesus Christ, steadfast love and hope. When he could have stayed at your side during the days of our rebellion and pride, he came to be our friend and guide. When he could have feasted on your power in those days of glory with you, he came to prepare a table for us where our hardened hearts might be softened and our broken lives might be made whole. When he could have the angels waiting on him, he came to serve us with forgiveness and grace, enduring death on the cross so we could have life forever. As we begin once more our living journey, as we seek to follow faithfully, remembering the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, we tell the story of that mystery we call faith. Christ died to set us free from sin. Christ was raised to break the power of death. Christ will come again to bring the kingdom as close to us as God's heart. Pour out your spirit of imagination upon this bread and this cup, gifts of your work, good and wonderful creation. As we are embraced at the table by the one who is prepared for us, may we open our hearts to welcome our sisters and brothers. As we have been set free by your love, may we proclaim freedom to the prisoners confined by fear and oppression. As we are filled with the bread of life, may we never cease feeding the hungry of our world. As we are nurtured by companion's cup, may we go out into the wilderness around us to take the lost, the last, the least, the little by the hand to walk together into that kingdom prepared for all your children. And when we are gathered around the table with your beloved children of every time and place, our songs will join together as our tears of joy mingle, singing your praise, praises forever and ever to you, God of David and Rebecca, Mary and Noah, Jesus of the outcasts of home, spirit of those who seek peace and reconciliation, God in community, holy and one.
our Lord, on the night that he was betrayed, on the night that he was arrested, took bread, sitting at the table with his friends, his disciples. He took the bread and broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, pouring it out, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. With every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, I proclaim my name until I come again. The gifts of God for the people of God. The bread of life. The cup of salvation. Now go to be God's blessing to others. We will stop, stop measuring out our love by the spoonful, but shower everyone with it. Now go to share the story of Jesus' love and hope for all. We will go to speak of the one who with grace and wonder shows everyone who they are and who they might be. Now go to pour out the Spirit's compassion in every corner of your life. We will go to care for everyone, even those we do not know. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is, I want Jesus to walk with me. Let us go now as God's people. May God open our eyes to the wonders of creation and the joy we can offer to those we meet. Let us go now as followers of Jesus. May he open our ears to the cries of the broken, to the words of hope which others offer to us. Let us go now as those filled with the Spirit. May we follow the Spirit down enduring love street. May we embrace our sisters and brothers of faithfulness 
corner. People of God, go now into the world. And as you go, keep the faith, live in hope, and love one another. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you.